Hi, welcome to this class called CST135. This is computer programming number two, which is also called Java 2. I look forward to working with you. This is going to be a one semester course. And if you're looking online and you're not a student at GCU, welcome. Let me tell you about myself. I'm a professor here at Grand Canyon University, and I teach a variety of computer programming languages. This class that we're talking about is Java. Now, you might wonder why Java? Is it old? Is it outfashioned? Well, actually, it's still one of the more popular programming languages out there. Let's take a look at a recent article from Tech Republic. They talk about 10 of the most programming languages that are still in demand, and guess what tops the list? 90% of Fortune 500 companies use Java as a back-end development tool. So it's still a great tool to use. It's used by billions of devices, and it is an on-demand programming language. Of course, the other ones are still great too. So JavaScript, HTML, Python, down the list with C Sharp, C++, and the others. So personally, I think Grand Canyon University is a great place to work and a great place to learn. So let's take a minute and talk about the programming degree that you could get at GCU, at Grand Canyon University. We focus on web development, mobile, and Windows applications. The three languages that you'll experience most in this program are Java, C Sharp, and PHP. And also we'll talk about JavaScript, CSS, and HTML, and the libraries that go with those. So popular frameworks that you'll learn if you're a program participant. With uh, C Sharp, you'll learn .NET. In Java, we'll talk about Java Enterprise in Spring. For PHP, we uh, focus on Laravel for uh, any of the framework design. And React and Angular are JavaScript, and we'll develop applications in all of these. So in database technology, we use various forms of SQL and a little bit of NoSQL languages. Uh, we work with cloud technologies, such as my, uh, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Heroku. Uh, we work with different techniques as you design software here. So you'll see people using the MVC design pattern, N layers, REST services. Uh, we do application testing. Students draw UMLs. They create wireframes, storyboards, and mockups. And so by the time you graduate, you have experience not only in just coding, but in design. Uh, when you leave here at this program, you'll have 12 or more applications that you can show to employers, and you'll have a variety of skills to uh, go along with that. GCU has a variety of uh, technology degrees. So if you want to do computer science, information technology, cybersecurity, or engineering, we have other programs as well. The computer programming degree is rather unique. You will hardly find any university in the United States focused on such software design as you would hear in this list. In this course, we're going to split it into two different parts. In the first half, we're going to talk about Java coding concepts with object-oriented design. So the four pillars of OOP are abstraction, inheritance, polymorphism, and encapsulation. And so we'll be focusing on that for our first half. The second half, we're going to pick up the Android Studio Toolkit and we'll develop Android apps. So it should also be understood that if you're in the Java 2 course, you have probably already have some Java experience. So you should understand what data types are, you should be able to write for loops, you should be able to work with arrays, you should be able to work with ifs and elses, and so basic language concepts of Java. In this class, we're going to work on two different types of assignments. We're going to have a semester-long project. We'll develop a contacts management program and also we'll have multiple coding activities and demos that we will go through in these videos. Let's talk about the semester app for a while. The first part of our application development will all be done in a text console environment and so we'll focus on the design of the classes working with file management and uh, getting the operations of the logic and the data. In part two of the class we will focus on Android development. So we will bring our application into Android Studio and develop it there. Some of the software that we'll use in this class includes Eclipse for Java and Android Studio. And we'll have other tools to help us out along the way, but those are the two primary programming tools that we'll use. Android Studio is kind of a memory hog, so you might want to think about upgrading. You'll need either a Windows or a Macintosh computer 
and I recommend 16 gigabytes of RAM. Get the fastest CPU you can afford and get a large monitor. Laying out all the different pieces of your Android app will require lots of real estate. Some of you are going to say, I don't have a new computer. Can I still take this class? You might be able to. You can work with a few things that will save some memory. First of all, get a phone or a tablet that runs Android. You can attach your phone with a USB cable and you can run the uh, test apps there. Now you can run the uh, application on the computer itself with an, with an emulator, but that will gobble up about a gigabyte of RAM. Some of you also might think that you can upgrade your existing computer and still work okay. So I recommend you get a memory upgrade and replace your old hard drive with an SSD version. So recently I did this on an older computer and I upgraded the uh, RAM to 12 gigabytes and got a brand new SSD drive and the combination was about $100 and my four-year-old computer is working fine with Android Studio. If you are really out of luck and you have no money at all, you can still run Android Studio, but think of the older version. Version 2.33 I think is the uh, newest old one and you can download it from this link. A couple things you cannot do with the older version is use the Kotlin programming language. You might have heard that Java is no longer the official or primary language of Android Studio. It still works great, but they, uh, if the people at Google are promoting Kotlin. In the older version of Android Studio, I think you're stuck with a older version of Java, which probably won't affect you at all in this class. But uh, if you want to download example projects from GitHub, let's say, you might have people that are working with a newer version of Android Studio and you will not be able to import their projects. I predict though that anything that we do in this course will be done just as well in Android Studio 2 as it is in 3. I know that I ran Android Studio 2 on a computer that only had 4 gigabytes of RAM and it worked pretty well. Here's the course outline of what we're going to accomplish. There'll be seven different activities and seven different milestones along the way. In activity one, we will install Eclipse and get Hello World and get some classes working. So some introduction to object-oriented programming. Activity two, we'll talk about inheritance and polymorphism and we'll have a couple of activities called a superhero battle, uh, weapons, bombs, and guns, and we'll talk about an interface for the person class. And then finally in activity three, we'll talk about generics and list collections. So the collections on Java. In activity four, we'll talk about reading and writing to text files. And then activity five, we'll get started with Android. So we'll do layouts and controls and developing different interfaces with our buttons. And then we'll create list adapters, which are a little bit complicated. And then finally, we'll get to the end where we can text, email, map, and phone using helper applications. So I look forward to working with you and learning how to develop Android apps using Java.